Hello everyone, welcome back from the break. Uh, we are going to start session two now. I'm Sharon Omoja, I'll be your host and I'm joining from Nairobi, Kenya. Our first talk for the session is Dealing with Quantity versus Quality by Enoch Seth Nyamador. The duration of the talk is going to take 20 minutes. That includes the Q&A uh, and sessions. And uh, please remember to use the question section to post your questions for the speaker. Thank you. Hello and welcome to my presentation titled um, Dealing with Quantity versus uh, Quality. What we map. Um, my name is Enoch and uh, thank you for watching. Uh, before I begin, I uh, would first love to talk about uh, the motivation for this uh, presentation. Uh, this presentation is uh, out of my quest to yeah map uh, everywhere I go in Ghana or everywhere I have some knowledge. And uh, as part of this quest, uh, I've made a couple of observations and experiences. And also in monitoring activities of contributions coming into um, Ghana from everyone just trying to see what I could fix um, and uh, what could be fixed, basically. Um, this uh, now brings us to uh, the who, where, how. Uh, before I start talking about um, um, Ghana, first I need to just bring you up to speed on uh, where Ghana is located. So Ghana is a country, of course, located in uh, West Africa, um, the African continent. Uh, neighboring countries include um, Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, and Togo. We are along the coast, of course. Uh, so if you need uh, to travel soon and want to visit, well, you can come visit us on the West Coast. <laughs> Um, just a quick um, look at um, the statistics about uh, contributions in OpenStreetMap from Ghana. On in Ghana, we can um, tell on average uh, per day, uh, Ghana is receiving uh, at least uh, let's say four contributors uh, per day. So there are three daily active uh, contributors uh, uh, per se. And also looking at the recent year statistics, uh, you could see um, a spike uh, in the contribution and the activities uh, uh, starting from uh, mid uh, 2016 or yeah, from 2017 upwards. Uh, and uh, you could tell them there is more interest, there is more energy, there is more contributions coming. It could be one person, a group of people. Um, but that uh, brings me to uh, who. So uh, in the early days of OpenStreetMap, of course, in uh, Ghana, volunteers and uh, volunteers are still the blood of the project and they will continue to be. Um, some uh, useful and interesting names that uh, I have come across uh, and you might also have come across uh, when you try to check history on data added to OpenStreetMap as the GoSM, the Ghana Rider, and then the low levels. Uh, for years, in the early days of the project, people tracing uh, roads for the first time and have actually one of uh, even roads, uh, the national grid, and uh, many others. But in the recent times, these uh, usernames are also popping up, um, Sami, um, Talika, Wes, and uh, many. This is not a complete list. Uh, but this is uh, my observations and uh, uh, looking at um, statistics uh, from uh, based on country, OpenStreetMap, and who is uh, doing what, who is active, and others. That brings me to now to uh, OSM Ghana, which is a not-for-profit and a community of volunteers and enthusiast uh, uh, professionals, uh, which I'm glad to have seen it's happen humble beginnings and. Uh, they are doing pretty well now, and uh, I'm happy as well. Also, there are youth mappers communities in Ghana. Um, youth mappers, a group of uh, university students, uh, also sharing the same uh, interest as the OpenStreetMap community and contributes to OpenStreetMap uh, as well. Based in UCC, University of Cape Coast, to uh, University of uh, Education, Winimba. This might not be uh, an up-to-date list, but. Uh, 
gives an impression and others uh, companies institutions uh, both for, for profit and not for profit uh, are also using and contributing open street map and uh, has have had a higher interest uh, or higher activities uh, contributing to open street map in ghana now i can talk about uh, uh, who is contributing to open street map without talking about how we got into open street map uh, myself, uh, I also, everyone has a unique story or has a story about how they got into OpenStreetMap. It could be by word of mouth from a friend uh, or you met at Mapathon, you hear this stuff, what is a Mapathon, is it a marathon? Or maybe it's a context, a competition, organizing, um, you were trying to just uh, win that prize uh, by adding uh, more stuff into OpenStreetMap or more nodes, more roads whatever stuff that need to be added as part of the context. Or it could be that uh, you need some data. In Ghana, um, OpenStreetMap, I, I can say, is the go-to source um, uh, data hub for street network. Uh, if somebody asks me for street network data you know, for Accra now, um, the go-to source I'll point them to is uh, either to go to OpenStreetMap, send them a link to maybe GeoFabric server to click download on the Ghana data to get it as a shapefile or whatever format they want to get it. Or it could be that you needed, um, yeah, maybe you needed data on the buildings as well for your village and or your school. You need buildings on the school campus and there is nowhere to be found. So I will tell you, yeah, maybe put it into OpenStreetMap. That way it's available for everyone to these are usual stories uh, we might have come across or have heard. Or application M uses it and you have this application on your phone and your shop is not there you're trying to add. Or because as part of your job, uh, there's a base map showing in application that you use at the job or you as part of your job that you do daily, um, your job is to um, contribute to OpenStreetMap, check for quality assurance or make new contributions. Now this brings me to uh, uh, the issues or some of the issues. I can't talk about all of them or I can't showcase all of them. The initial approach or um, I thought I had when I submitted this uh, talk was to do a, a demonstration, but uh, uh, in a couple of try, I found out this might take much time. So I decided to put uh, screenshots and then uh, just speak to them and uh, happy to answer questions. Yeah, it is no doubt that um, uh, the communication or conversations about uh, OpenStreetMap um, data quality and data coming from um, source B or A and uh, who is adding it is having issues. Yeah. And uh, well, we can't uh, ignore quality if uh, we want to continue to save lives and uh, save so many things uh, with our all in OpenStreetMap community and uh, data. Of course, there is no other, and uh, there's only one for now, um, uh, which we need to take good care of. Um, seeing some of these stuff in Ghana uh, is sometimes, or uh, seeing this, uh, not only in Ghana, maybe wherever, but personally, uh, since Ghana is the focus, is um, highly frustrating sometimes when uh, I come across stuff like this. This is uh, a random. Uh, um, primary road or maybe trunk road uh, mapped over residential areas. Yeah, it could be that uh, the mapper is uh, the one doing this. Um, me no harm and contributed to Wikipedia. I have learned one thing that uh, uh, to assume good faith. And uh, I assume good faith even though sometimes I get frustrated. But I assume good faith. This person is a new person, but they are trying to uh, contribute to their their soup to the soup or just uh, contribute their share to this uh, global uh, pool as well. But uh, there might be some obstacles where they are not doing it well and then uh, lead to more harm. Or uh, this uh, where a lot of uh, buildings uh, are stacked on each other, a railway switch coming from nowhere in Ghana, the railway line uh, I know of uh, doesn't cross uh, somewhere we imaginary maybe is underground and the railway switch is above i don't know 
but uh, this is also one observation. Um, another one uh, is uh, um, duplicate tracing of uh, roads. Uh, uh, could be by new users uh, and then sometimes uh, users that have been around for some time. It could be users uh, working for a company or an institution and a lot of stuff. Now, uh, you might uh, be asking a question that, uh, well, um, if I see all these stuff, uh, or if you come across this, uh, what do I do? Uh, personally, when I encounter these issues or whenever I come across these stuff, I, I try to be um, conservative as possible to not to delete uh, as much as to be deleted. That tells you that uh, I am left with no other option sometimes than just to delete um, these objects. Uh, but in the first case, I try to reuse them. Um, reuse them in order to keep the node history and keep uh, history, of course. But uh, where I find no use for them, and uh, that is, they are too much. Uh, and uh, the time I will spend into reusing them could be used to fix other stuff. Um, I find no other option than to waste time uh, reusing them than to delete them. Sometimes I contact uh, the mapper directly uh, or the organization responsible or the company. Uh, yeah, there are times I have sent messages to uh, companies uh, whose employees or data team members uh, made uh, some uh, mistakes that should not be made. But uh, we are all humans and we are bound to make mistakes. But some mistakes can be avoided uh, in, in that regard uh, to fix them. But before I send these messages, sometimes I fix them. Or in most cases, I fix them before sending them a message in order not to let this uh, become an issue to someone using the map on the go or using the map in a very frequent update manner. Talk about deleting already. Or leave a comment on the chain set where communications or much interactions can go on. Uh, for example, recently I was forced to uh, write a blog, um, uh, an OSM diary, about uh, one uh, um, observation where the user coming from an uh, application is uh, collecting data. Personally, I could conclude that uh, this user is, might be collecting data for internal purpose or just adding bookmarks, but these uh, favorite bookmarks, uh, these their personal favorites or bookmarks, are ending up in OpenStreetMap uh, at a very fast rate. Uh, a lot of uh, bookmakers, that is, uh, we we'll say, um, uh, betting shops in Ghana, in a forest, uh, very close to pylon. So uh, I could suspect that this user is working for power transmission company where he or she is in charge of uh, collecting some information on these pylons. So you could see that um, they are close to the pylons, uh, but uh, the information attached to these bookmarks uh, were not useful for me to reuse. So what did I do in that regard? I move the names, which were the person's favorite to fix me or a note. And then where there were no um, pylons, I reuse the notes for the poles and then the transmission lines pop up. So um, in the beginning, as I mentioned, uh, it's, it's in good faith. The users don't try to uh, destroy, but some people come purposely to destroy uh, the, the map as well. And that is why um, in they say that uh, in OpenStreet, in Wikipedia, decisions taken by administrators is not to harm the user, but uh, to um, safeguard a project and it's in good faith. And if you have issues with uh, this, you can uh, um, appeal for it to be look, look at and uh, we all make mistakes as well. Um, I would like to uh, jump to a conclusion um, since I am no longer doing a demonstration of uh, some of this, but uh, in conclusion, what I would like to say that uh, we should all in map uh, when we know, uh, yeah, remote mapping, we all do remote mapping. Mapathons are great ways to to help others across the world. Uh, uh, but uh, let people help themselves also as well. Uh, by mapping, 
what they know as is you you shouldn't uh, be far away and try to map and if you have no idea about uh, this for example one uh, i recently encountered was uh, not recently i've seen them several times coming from remote mapping activities uh, through organized mapping either through uh, uh, tasking manager or other staff is uh, buses uh, being traced as uh, uh, buildings uh, i think I, I made mention of this in another talk uh, last year but uh, it keeps i keep repeating it because it's something i have seen frequently and uh, it is not good and it's not helping anyone um 2019 i made a, um, a session i had a session uh it was a chat more or less like a chat workshop interacting with uh, colleagues at the state of the map africa which was titled if you can't um well this is a typo if you can't save it uh, this should be can't if you can't save it don't kill it uh, uh, so there's a proverb that if uh, something is given to where you know you can improve upon it you better keep it uh, uh, in its uh, state as it is so um, this session we we look at uh, how um, i had a lot a couple of uh, screenshots a lot of them of um, very bad mapping i classify them as very bad mapping uh, um, sorry if um, uh, this is not the right word but um, i think that is uh, in my opinion a humble opinion to use because uh, they were very bad and how i tried to save them how i got in touch with these mappers how i cleaned them up how i deleted them and basically uh, one of um, how will i say it uh, uh, basically that is what this presentation also tries to um, achieve as well so uh, in the end uh, i shared how i fixed these tabs responded to them and also communicated to uh, organizations and sometimes uh, some of these uh, mappers uh, or institutions respond and uh, they try to Fix them but i have not seen much improvement uh, though uh, the next one is uh, open street map is not a soap box uh, uh, when we buy soap and we take uh, the soap out of the box we throw the box away of course uh, to say that uh, yeah contests are fine uh, i am not against the uh, organization of contests or running uh, competitions for people to contribute certain data to open street map to win prizes but we should make it clearly to uh, participants of con contents that uh, OpenStreetMap as a whole is not a competition. It is not about how much uh, uh, buildings you trace in five minutes to see who is a, a superpower of uh, uh, buildings or who is building mappers, the best building mapper. But uh, uh, we should be aware of uh, the quality of data being added. So it's not a competition to to be a superpower of uh, building powerhouse or warehouse or whatever. Because sometimes the perception that uh, this is a competition, we need to win this competition, it motivates uh, people to go extra mile uh, that shouldn't be gone to add stuff which become problematic. And... Uh, 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 one thing I forgot about the, uh, the previous point in not killing it is because it kills volunteer spirit uh, as a volunteer trying to um, map or trying to fix staffs in, in open street map for everyone to reuse. And when you come across these issues, sometimes the time you will spend into fixing them overweighs, outweighs uh, the time you put into uh, making new changes or introducing someone to open street map. So it kills a lot of time and kills uh, volunteer motivation. Uh, one way was both approach. We should also try to use a, a both uh, way approach, uh, two way approach in uh, contribution to OpenStreetMap. Myself, volunteers, uh, companies, organized mapping, everyone. The same effort we put into mapping uh, communities or areas. Uh, we should also put the same effort to ensure maximum data quality. If we, we, we are on a quest to map the entire world in five days, we should also put five days, uh, max, uh, the, first, the same energy into cleaning whatever is uh, not right in it. And also we should also, um, I don't know what to say again, but we should just try to put much effort into it that 
whatever effort we put into it to generate data, we should put that effort to clean up. And so we should be responsible. My, yeah, we all should be responsible for our actions, uh, whatever we put into. Sometimes uh, you go back, myself, I go back and see all oh, my contributions uh, five years ago. It's like, oh, was I the one who mapped this? We all make mistakes. Uh, and, and for that matter, uh, we should try as much as possible. If you are getting introduced to OpenStreetMap by someone, if you have introduced someone to OpenStreetMap, try to put in maximum effort to ensure good practices. And uh, the last bullet is uh, an interesting page, a good one to read, uh, uh, good practices to be aware of when contributing to OpenStreetMap, which uh, I recommend everyone uh, reads as well. Um, before I leave, I would like to invite you to um, State of the Map Africa, which is happening uh, in November. And check out the website for the date is 19th to 21st of uh, November 2021. And you're all invited uh, to submit a talk, workshop, and uh, participate as well. Um, thank you very much, and uh, I will pause here for questions. Thank you very much, and uh, I will pause here for uh, thank you, Enoch, for that amazing presentation. Uh, we'll head straight to the questions. Uh, the first question is, um, do we have trackers or platforms that communities can use to detect any edits that are, are not of good quality? Well, there are so many. Uh, we have uh, tools or platform accessible. Uh, Osmos is one example from uh, OSMFR, uh, which I, I normally use uh, sometimes as well. And there is uh, OSM char uh, from uh, my box, uh, which you can apply filters. And then uh, you can also use overpass uh, queries uh, by applying dates and certain stuff, certain tags you are very much interested in, or just to define a bounding box for recent changes and see what is being done. So yeah, I use uh, Osmos, uh, OSM char, and uh, overpass uh, mostly. Oh, great. Yes, another question is uh, many a times bad mappings are from new mappers. Uh, so how long should we be patient to them before they become experts? Well, this depends on, uh, I would say, two factors. It could be uh, one way, uh, just a random guy like me who discovered OpenStreetMap trying to add something or trying to do something, but I have no idea, and I'm messing it up. Uh, somebody needs to be watching sometimes, so mostly. Uh, to get in touch, um, but uh, the time to wait, um, I think um, I don't have a definite answer to this, but uh, I think which time we all get to learn and uh, become better if uh, we are very much interested or motivated to to continue to do whatever I wanted to do. Um, the other part is uh, if it's through a, a training or an institution, organize map your company, uh, like I mentioned, the company or this institution should put in maximum effort uh, to tell their editors, to advise them what to do and what to need to do. And they should be um, guide, guided and to take maximum responsibility too. Because if something goes wrong, uh, if uh, I were to come after someone, I'll come after the company, not uh, the map or the institution itself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Another question is, um, there is a request for feedback button when making change set in ID editor and the JOSAM. Where do these requests go and who responds to them? Okay, uh, when you check that box, uh, that uh, request for, yeah, this is one of the filters I also use because when you do that, uh, there is a, a key value pair added to the change set, which is a review requested, yes. And then it can be filtered by anyone. You can also filter uh, change sets in your country by this, and then uh, you can fix it. So the first point now, I would say, if you want to look at uh, uh, people clicking this, so new comments, I try to tell them, okay, if you don't know what you are doing, just try to uh, click this button because this way it makes it uh, highly visible for someone who wants to fix, to, to review. It doesn't mean that it doesn't get committed to OpenStreetMap. It gets committed. But there is just a flag for someone to see quickly and check it and then review it. Mm, thank you. There are no any other questions here. Uh, thank you, Enoch, and thank you, everyone, for joining. For more interactions with the speaker, please use. Oh, just a moment. There is a question that just popped up right now. Let me just go into it. Uh, should OSM adopt a more strict method of verification? As on Wikipedia, we, as on Wikipedia, where edits have to be approved before they are uploaded to the map. 
Uh, I don't think Wikipedia edits are approved. Uh, so far as this is verifiable and reliable content, and uh, they are verifiable external sources to, um, how do you call it, uh, prove the points you are making. If you say uh, Enoch uh, is the founder of OSM, where is it published externally that I am the founder of OSM? But on um, uh, OSM, uh, we are dealing here with uh, location uh, data and content. So. Uh, it might not be totally 100% valid. Maybe the person meets something about uh, uh, a tag, something I found this morning uh, in Ghana also is uh, people mapping new comments, mapping building, and then they say um, a story building in the in the name session. So I have this chain set, I comment and then tell them this is a way to start. So I, I think um, a strict method, I don't know, but uh, in order to be inclusive and uh, open the net for everyone, whether you have less or minimum knowledge, uh, I think uh, we should still uh, allow this. But uh, we have a lot to do and a long way to go in uh, finding a better approach to, to handling this. Yeah. If it's coming to a training, like I mentioned, is the responsibility of whoever is organizing this training or this uh, project uh, to ensure that uh, things don't go out of hand. Uh, great. Uh, another question is, where do you filter changes for review? Um, you can use uh, OSM char uh, for this. Uh, when you use OSM char, normally you see this uh, uh, flag attached to it that review requested. So you, you should find that uh, easily in OSM char. Uh, yes, and uh, maybe just to add on that, there are so many OSM quality quality assurance tools. You've mentioned OSM char. We have Kipright. We have Osmose, and Although, so maybe uh, those the project managers can be using those to to detect uh, to detect uh, uh, bad mappings, as you said, for the projects they are working on. Yes, thank you very much, Eno. Uh, well, so, maybe uh, one thing uh, is uh, also about uh, change set comments. Uh, I think this uh, there have been discussions about this on a couple of mailing lists, but uh, change set comments uh, being all in hashtags is not. Uh, helpful. Um, sometimes it's either coming from uh, organized mapping or it's, uh, that is what the person got to know first. If I introduce you to OpenStreetMap and uh, all you got to know is using hashtags for, for the change set comments, it is likely that continuing you will be using only hashtags. So hashtags doesn't make uh, uh, any meaning at all. So uh, I think uh, we should try to add some text, describe what you hashtags are fine. I'm not against them. But uh, we should also try to add uh, what we've done. Come, there's a good uh, page on the OSM Wiki about good chain set comment and uh, the, the best practices uh, page too as well, uh, the Wiki page, which can be looked at. And something we should all be aware of just not to, uh, how do you call it? Not to close our eyes on it where it's hurting us, but we don't want to say that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Enoch, and uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining. Uh, that marks the end of this session. Uh, for more interaction with the speaker on uh, quality versus qu quantity, uh, please use the post-talk chat room. And uh, see you in the next talk. Thank you.